All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today, you join me as I go and pick up a 2007 Toyota Avensis diesel. I know what you're thinking, and yes, it is as dreary as that sounds, but I do this day in, day out. So I thought I'd bring you guys along to share some of my monotony with you. You're welcome. I got a call from a contact, and this car was being part exchanged against a brand new car with a main dealer. They were struggling to value it because when you type the reg into Australia's dealer system, it valued it at just 150 pounds. Obviously, it's worth a lot more than that. And that's the trouble with those online valuation systems. It isn't accurate enough. If the car's an absolute skip, no service history, one key, rips in the seat, short MOT, then it's worth its weight. But this car has been described to me as absolutely mint. Excellent service history, two keys, never been smoked in, mint interior. So I thought it could be worth as much as 10 times what Australia suggested. 1,500 quid, and that's what I've given for it. I know that might sound like a lot for a 2007 Toyota Avensis, but what is it worth? The previous owner quite rightly balked at the offer of 150 quid. It had been serviced recently and he'd spent more than that on it. When you think about the amount of money Autotrader must get every single month, I alone, in my tin pot garage with an asbestos roof, pay Autotrader in excess of £5,000 a month to advertise my cars with them. So you'd expect their systems to be a bit more accurate than just plucking a figure out of the sky. I'm on my way there now and I'm quite excited to see whether it lives up to my expectations. One thing I've learned with this job, and I suppose it's true of life in general, although it did take me quite a while to work this out, it's better to pay more for something that doesn't need much work, rather than buying something cheap that does, because they're never cheap enough. You might think you're getting a bargain, but you seldom are. It's a bit like property. I spend quite a bit of time on Rightmove, almost as much time as I do on Autostrader itself. I like to look at cheap fixer-uppers and see what I can do with them. I love trying to buy them and I love the process of fixing them up. I just love the transformation. I like the idea of adding value to something, but you've got to be careful because sometimes they're just not cheap enough. You know, when you see an old fashioned house that's got double glazing and recently been rewired, it doesn't matter if it's got a pink bathroom suite and a psychedelic carpet because those things can easily be changed. But when you see one that needs its windows doing a rewire, new central heating system, and it might be two or three thousand pounds cheaper than the other one I've mentioned, it still isn't cheap enough so the budget just ends up running away with itself. And it's exactly the same with cars, exactly the same with everything. That's why every single time, whether it's a house or a car, or it doesn't matter, I'd rather pay a little bit more for it and do less work. There's always more profit that way. I've got two fixer-uppers that are going through at the moment, and I was thinking about setting up a separate YouTube channel and just documenting the whole process, but I don't know whether that would get any traction or not. If that's something that you'd be interested in watching, then let me know in the comments below, because I might look into that. Anyway, I suppose the moral of the story is don't be afraid to pay a little bit extra for something if it's nice, if it saves you spending money on it. That then takes us neatly onto the Toyota Avensis. Let's go and check it out and see if my theory is correct. See you in a second. Well, we're here and it's exactly, exactly what I thought it would be. It's that silvery gold colour, which all Toyotas of this era were. Apart from the headlamps, which need buffing, or could do with buffing, it's not bad at all. It's got the original, I don't know about the back, but the original front plate is from its supplying dealer, Vantage Toyota, Preston. That looks completely original. It's even got the old tax disc holder. I'm building up a picture of this car now, and it is quite genuine. Right, let me do a vehicle history check. Let's see what sort of life it's had. So, go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, which is Papa Echo 07 Alpha Uniform Julia, and then check the vehicle. It's important that you do a check like this before you buy a car. It just checks for mileage rollbacks, it checks to see if it's ever been in any accidents, checks to see if there's outstanding finance on it, all that sort of stuff. Right, so I've got the report back. It's had two owners, looks like a two-owner car actually. It's a Toyota Avensis D4D T3. That's a reasonable spec then, T3X. Silver, two litre diesel, 125 brake horsepower. First registered March 2007. The last owner's had it since 2012. It was MOT'd in March this year and it had only done 87,000 miles at its MOT. Only had one advisory item on its last MOT, which was offside front brake pipe corroded or covered in grease or other material. It's not bad, is it, for a 15-year-old Toyota? Right, let's go and have a look then, shall we?
Right, let's have a look then, shall we? Try not to look at that, that was yesterday's mistake. That's an A-toner written off Ford Fiesta ST. Right, well this looks straight away, I know it's a 15-year-old Toyota Aventus, but it looks dead genuine. Can't see any signs of any paintwork on this side. Panel gaps look good. That's very, very tidy actually. Looks like the previous owners cared for it. Couple of little minor marks there, but I can touch those in. Tires then, so we've got a Nexon, which is probably on four mil of tread. Another Nexon on the front. Again, probably five mil actually there. And the discs look okay. That's good. I didn't realize, but it's got indicators built into the wing mirrors. Didn't know Toyota Aventis came with those. Moving around to the front then, we've got front fog lights. Like I said in the car, we've got the original supplying dealer plates, which is always a good sign. We've got Xenon lights. That might have been part of the T3 spec. The headlamps do need a bit of a buff, but it's typical of Toyota of this era, really. They should come up well. The near side one's even worse, but it should buff back. It's quite an easy job to do that. And around this side, there's no rust. That's remarkable, you know, for a car of this age. We've got another matching Nexon. There's a slight dent there on the, dry, on the passenger door, but that's it. No marks on the roof. And another Nexon on the back. Four Nexons with plenty of tread. Let's go around to the back then. We've got both sets of keys, which work. We've got matching plates. Another one there from Vantage Toyota. What a big boot. Big practical car, this. It's like a Mondeo or an Insignia. It's all very clean. Doesn't smell of dogs or cigarettes. Rear lights look good. It's a clean car, this. There's definitely some profit in this. Let's have a look inside. This was described as being mint. I've had some dodgy descriptions in my time, but not this one. Those seats look like they've never been sat in. Rear armrest and cup holders, look at that. Original mats. This is exactly as described this. It barely needs a clean. Up front is exactly the same. We've got powerful mirrors, four electric windows. It's a dual car this, there's no two ways about it, but it is a car that would last somebody for probably five years, 10 years maybe if you looked after it. Ah, actually, let's have a look under the bonnet. Toyotas of this era, especially the diesel, well, only the diesels actually, always seem to suffer with bad head gaskets. Usually only if they were neglected. Well, it's quite clean under here. No gunk there under the filler cap, that's good. The oil looked clean, actually. That is clean. This had a, an oil change recently. By the looks of it. Chassis legs aren't bent. No rust on the top mounts. It looks good. Should we start it up? Oh, we've got cruise control as well. Wait for the glow plug. They're noisy, aren't they, diesels? It does sound fairly sweet, though, that. It's done 88,107 miles. Has it ever been smoked in? Never. Well, I'm pleased with this. It's boring, but it is good stock for me. Shall we check which station the radio was set to? Radio 4. In there we've got all the owner's manuals, locking wheel nuts. No, this would do somebody. Let's try the air conditioning actually, it's a warm day. 
would help if I turned it on, wouldn't it? That already is cold and getting colder. Well, I'm quite pleased with my purchase. Clutch feels okay. Should we take it for a run? See what it's like. And we're off. Well, straight away, it felt solid over those bumps. Brakes work. I haven't got a single warning light on. We've got ice cold air conditioning. This weather is all over the place today. 10 minutes ago, I had my heated seats on. Now it's 18 degrees and I've got the aircon on. Oh, it's nice and quiet today. Well, it pulls really well. 125 brake horsepower, front wheel drive, six speed manual. This is good for probably 55 miles per gallon. Steering's good. You can still feel all the grain in the steering wheel, you know, where it hasn't worn off over the years. Same with the buttons on the steering wheel. Somebody has looked after this. I do feel like a mini cabber though. In fact, I think I was picked up in a 2007 event this the other night from town. Can't really remember the rest of the evening. In fact, I fell, <laughs> I fell asleep in it. So I can personally vouch for how comfortable the back seats are. Can't beat the clatter of a diesel engine, can you? I'd have personally preferred this to be petrol because those petrols were just bulletproof. But the way this has been looked after with this sort of history, this will run for five years without even thinking. I'm really quite happy with this. I haven't got an awful lot to do. It needs a valet, so I'll take it for a full detail valet. I'll ask them to buff the headlamps as well. So that should set me back around hundred pounds or so. Take it to my mechanics to get them to check it over. But it was serviced recently, MOT'd recently. There's nothing really for me to do. If I can keep my spend to about hundred pounds, it should owe me 1600 quid. It's got to be worth 26, 27, 28, anywhere in that sort of region, I think. At this end of the market, it isn't really that price sensitive. All that will happen, I guarantee, somebody will ask me for a cheap, reliable car for three grand or less, and this is it. This is the kind of car I'd sell with confidence. It's also the kind of car that I don't mind if it sits in the forecourt for a while because I haven't got a load of money tied up in it. There are some cars on there that I've got thousands of pounds sat in, and I've had them for weeks, and it isn't a great use of money. Whereas something like this, if I could choose my ideal forecourt, it would be 40 pieces of metal like this that have been cared for that only owe me 1,500 pounds or two grand. That'd be the ideal scenario, but let's have nice varied stock, really. 40 of these would be perfect, though. Low outlay, low risk, decent profit, and they shouldn't come back to haunt me because of the badge. Granted, it wouldn't be the most exciting job, but this is the kind of stuff that I sell day in, day out. This stuff is recession-proof. Well, I think my theory was correct. I could have bought a much cheaper Aventis. I could have gone onto eBay or Facebook Marketplace or something like that and picked one up for five or 600 pounds with no service history, higher mileage, issues, one key, all that sort of stuff. And I could have quite easily spent a thousand pounds trying to bring it up to this level. But it never would be, and that's the point. You're much better off buying a nice, well cared for example in the first place. But believe me, trying to buy a 15 year old car in this condition, it's real, it's like needle in a haystack stuff. They're so few and far between. People who aren't in the used car business expect all 15 year old cars to be like this. And believe me, they really aren't. If only that were the case, I'd make an awful lot more money doing my job. I think with minimal effort, I should be able to get a thousand pounds profit out of this car quite easily. This is exactly the kind of thing that I talk about in my online course. All you've got to do is do this 25 times a month and you've got a thriving business. I'm now at the point, because my overheads are so high, that I've got to do this 30 or 40 times a month. But there's still money to be made. It's just very repetitive, monotonous and tedious. But it's my bread and butter. It might be a boring job, but I do still get a kick out of it occasionally. Right, well, I'm off to take this to the Valators, so thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So, yeah, cheers, guys. I'll see you next time.